All right, time to look at our first three chests in the throne room here. Our racers talking to the king, getting their instructions to go take out the dragon lord this morning. And we have a silver harp. So our first item, key item is already found. The very first chest gives us our silver harp. A an interesting start to say the least, but not maybe the start these runners were looking for. Oh, and it looks like we have a town just north of the castle and Game Boy jumping in immediately and finding the breakfast with Breconary. Oh, and that is a starting hand axe for Game Boy F9. That is a big early find to help him do a significantly better job of killing these enemies. Oh, an amused miniature taking the first death of the seed. Not able to take down that ghost. I do think if Amuse sees that town to the north, we may see a reset here and attempt to save that gold that he just found. But we'll have to take a look what happens if he gets sight of that town. This magician is not being friendly and has the sleep spell and Amuse goes down again. But Game Boy, with that hand axe in hand, is rolling in XP. Already has level 2 and multiple spells. Game Boy definitely showing off the value of that hand axe. He is one-shotting the ghosts, whereas Amused had trouble even getting through one at all. And given these early stats here, it certainly creates for some challenges. Ooh, and a Druin providing a challenge in the form of the Dragon Lord 2 breath. The Druin's been eating his ghost peppers this morning. It looks like we have a bit of a pause on the Amused Miniature screen. I'm not sure if that's a streaming issue or if that's uh, taking a moment to... Oh, Amused there. was having a little bit of technical difficulties earlier, so I'm not sure what that was, but it does look like he's back with us now and continuing to attempt to take on the ghost. Sadly, he's about two steps... He went about two steps to little to the north or he'd have seen the bottom section of that town for on and we know there was a hand axe there and lots of other good stuff that he could really use this early in this seed so that is really rough luck on his part so far oh man and game boy meanwhile hitting level three and finding the spell of hurt more so that will be huge in terms of the uh, in terms of the advantage here yeah, this one looks like it definitely has the chance to snowball if Amuse does not go north quickly. Thankfully, with this dead end down here, it may drive him that direction. So he may luck out here and get the information that right there is the town. And there's the reset. Yep, exactly what I expected with that one gold chest available in the first starting chest in the throne room that that was going to be a reset as soon as that town was noticed. Oh, wow, and Game Boy comes across an Axe Knight, but the Hurt Boar is not enough. And that Axe Knight is going to send him right back to have a chat with the kindly old King Lorik. And meanwhile, the Amused Miniature taking the gold from the uh, the throne room, but it was a really low roll, 506. That's not going to be enough to purchase a hand axe. Yeah, that is really rough. Those gold chests for everybody watching this morning can roll anywhere from 500 to 750 gold. So 506 was almost an absolute min roll. That is going to be... A potential reset for Amused here, and maybe even a complete restart here, as soon as they see this hand axe. 
Oh, and there is the realization. But nope, going to settle for the copper sword. Only five less attack power. But also will allow to get at least a little bit of defense in the leather armor. Well, definitely with our knowledge of the seed going to work out, because with just a couple levels worth of experience, which will not take long, they will come across the Hurt More spell and be able to be significantly better off than they would be otherwise in this seed. So not really going to set Amuse back as much as he might fear at this particular moment. Uh, and another level for Game Boy with a good chunk of hit points there. That that was double-digit hit point gain, so that is definitely going to help a lot. And with 62 MP available already and the Hurt More spell, this should become very quick to get some kills and some levels off these enemies. Oh yeah, having a little bit of gold now. Going to go and purchase some of those uh, additional sundries over here in the item shop. The Dragon Scale, which once that's put on... That will add two defense to Game Boy's total here. Oh, and the Amused Miniature not able to take out a Scorpion. Yeah, with only having 11 HP, that might have been slightly ambitious with just the leather armor and I think a Dragon Scale, but definitely worth the attempt and now i assume that amused will find a ghost find a couple of you know slimes whatever and we'll get levels fairly quickly here there is the scale of the dragon worn by amused as we go along here apparently hadn't done that in the item shop when you have to figure with having the herbs in uh, in in play that maybe that could have been something to get him off the ground here. Meanwhile, Game Boy finding the abandoned town of Hawksness. There's a guardian enemy that uh, is guarding potentially something, one of the key items. But first, taking out a knight here is level six, three power, seven speed, two hit points, and some magic points as well. But no new spells, so we still don't have any version of healing other than our herbs. So that is definitely a rough spot for this early game for our runners. And speaking of rough spot, the Amused Miniature finding out that Magicians have the spell asleep, able to wake up in a turn, though, and take it out, and is just four experience away from level three. Meanwhile, the Guardian at Hawksness is the Blue Dragon, takes it out with a couple of Hurt Moors, gets a level in the process. That was very good luck for Game Boy. That is only about a 50-50 proposition to hit each of those hurts, and it will take two of them. And that's the Erdrix armor. Oh, boy. The best armor in the game. It uh, has so many different functions. You see no longer taking damage in those black swamp tiles. Oh, and here's a, well, a metal slime that runs away. But yeah, you don't take damage in swamp or barrier tiles. It reduces the damage done by the Hurt or Hurt More spells, as well as the Fire Breath. Reduces that by a third. It negates the spell of Stop spell, so that'll never work against you. And it heals one hit point per step that you take. Plus, there's that nice little 28 defense boost as well. Yes, definitely a huge find this early on, and getting both of those Hurt Mores to land was a huge boon for Game Boy right there. Just the way things have been rolling, everything coming up Millhouse for Game Boy, and now able to purchase a large shield, the second best shield in the game. And we did see also in Breconary that elusive silver shield. So if we find a gold grind later in possibly the castle treasury after we find mountain cave or grave, we could definitely get that silver shield with ease. It's only about 15 steps away. And other than druins, I haven't seen much that will endanger them on that short walk. That was interesting. A little swamp diamond there as Game Boy doing some meandering around. And now finding an Axe Knight to the north. Able to withstand an attack. And one maybe, well, a hurt more, maybe a swipe will do it here. Nope, it's going to just double hurt more for safety here. The attack, while okay, is not that great. And there's another 130, and 
that experience get passing the 600 mark that'll get level eight now for game boy four speed 26 hit points no power no mp but some spells stop spell and repel it looks like MTI woke from the dead sleep and screamed out, I love it, before collapsing back into bed and going to sleep. Yes, MTI loves those zero stats, that's for sure. It took two to wake him up, though. If it was just one, eh, just kind of hit the snooze button, but zero power, zero MP. I love it. And back to sleepy. Yeah, it would take a full empty eye level to keep him awake this morning. Well, there was one that occurred not too long ago in a casual stream by another one of our popular runners, High Spirits. Yep, I was there and clipped it for empty eyes viewing pleasure, as a matter of fact. Oh, we've got another town here around the bend. But first, a Druin Lord going to add to that bit of suspense here. Yep, we are definitely hoping this is either Cantlin or Cole. We are still miss. Oh, that'll work too. Oh boy. Good morning, Key Town. <laughs> means access to keys, absolutely. Oh, this is a major find because with those keys, we will be able to do several things that will unlock us access to Tantagel's treasury. It will also unlock the lower floors of the Grave of Garenham, along with one treasure chest, actually, that is hidden right here in Ramoldar. The Treasure of the Inn, so as it were. But first, Game Boy going to take a look, maybe see if there's a better weapon available. Although, I mean, it's more so for knowledge than anything else. Eh, Silver Shield, That's uh, but there's one closer, so really no need to go back to that weapon shop. Yeah, that definitely looked like a check for potentially a broadsword or a flame sword because we have not seen Erdrick's big stick yet. We do have his armor, but we do not yet have the big sword. So now into the treasury we go here, and we've got an herb in the top left, an herb in the bottom left, wings in the bottom right, and some big bucks in the middle. All right, so the middle chest does have our gold grind, while Amused does not have Game Boy's luck on the blue dragon fight, misses the hurt more, and is sent back to talk to King Lorik. Oh, my goodness. All right, so now we're going to get a look at our randomized dungeon in the Tentagel basement. Using the spell of Radiant, going to shed some light on the subject, and it's the southern end of the Swamp Cave. So that will lead a path to someplace else in the world on the other side, but first going to take a peek at what the boss is on the Swamp Tile, that uh, spiked area that is hiding the princess, or guarding the princess that is behind a locked door, and Game Boy trying to get away from this blue dragon here, and not able to do so. All right, so the Swamp Cave and Hawksness both have a blue dragon trap tile, so we have knowledge of both of our trap tiles pre-Sharlock Castle, while Amuse takes out an Axe Knight with the Hurtmore spell, and is trying to catch up on the exploration here. We'll have keys momentarily. Yeah. And now Game Boy, with the knowledge of the trap tile, will use the outside spell from inside Swamp Cave. Oh boy, we have the dream. Swamp goes from Castle to Garenham. This is one of the most unusual setups you can have as 
this particular setup allows you a gold grind without taking a death because of the three treasure chests in the back of Garenham, plus the three chests in the throne room will allow us to get to our eight chest threshold before that gold grind chest in the in the Tantagel treasury. So we are set here if we do want to go for a silver shield. And there's a third silver shield. We've seen one in Rimmeldar, we've seen one in Breconary, and we now have one in Garenham. My goodness. Amazing. I didn't know that many of the blacksmiths in Aleph Guard were capable of making the Silver Shield, let alone making enough of them to sell. Oh boy, and on the other continent, Game Boy has found the Staff of Rain Cave and has turned that harp that we got in the treasury into the Staff of Rain. So we are now one-third of the way to our Rainbow Drop materials. All right, and it looks like we have yet another cave on Game Boy's screen. So Game Boy's exploration of this second continent definitely beginning to pay dividends as we have tablet cave so we will have one chest at the bottom of this cave and there are no encounters to be had in this cave so as soon as game boy navigates it we will have yet another chest open oh my it's the sword the tablet cave has the sword and game boy is off to the races ladies and gentlemen All right, Amuse trying to close the exploration gap does have the information that the swamp in Tantagel leads to the back of Garenham, so that will definitely be helpful on his part. While Game Boy F9 has found coal, and we find the Erdrix token. So we have the armor and the token. We have the Staff of Rain. All we need are those stones of sunlight to turn that all into the jerk for the rainbow drop. Game Boy F9 really tearing this seed apart this morning. He must have woken up to the rocky theme and is just right on top of it. Sadly, this looks like this could be a problem for Amused. Amused did not have good luck hurt mooring that blue dragon in Hawksness, and therefore will be taking damage from this very large swamp up ahead, and we have no healing at this point. So this could be very rough for Amused to get through here. <laughs> yes, Pyre. It does not appear that we will need to uh, check the Sherlock treasury except for the possibility of the fighter's ring at this point. And that would be a very, very small circumstance where that would be beneficial. As we can see that at level 9, we already are already up to 59 strength. So you're saying as far as the status of the 25,000 gold pyramid, it's pretty much... The old buzzer in this case? Yep, that appears to be the case. Tablet Cave was found to hold the sword as opposed to Erdrick's tablet. Apparently it was confused about what it was supposed to have. But there is Amused finding the town of Cantlin, which we know if there are any coordinates, sadly all they will lead to is the flute. I will say that I stepped away for occupational obligations, so I see the token was found on Game Boy's side. Where was that found at? 
Yes, we had the armor in Hawksness. We had the big stick in the tablet cave, and the town of Cole had the token. Cole had the token. Okay, I saw bits and pieces, but uh, truth be told, and maybe being a little uh, overexposing here, I'm actually uh, both working and uh, commentating at the same time here, and uh, pulls me away from uh, from my duties here in the commentary to do the occupational obligations. Yep, this definitely looks like the $25,000 pyramid is going to be a moot point this morning. Okay, Game Boy just making sure that the dragon scale is on. And that looked like the setup for the gold grind, and he is now going to travel back through the Swamp Cave to the Vanilla Stones of Sunlight entrance, and will then check... Oh no, he's just going to take on Blue D's until he death warps. Definitely a viable strategy here. Good experience if he can get the Blue D's killed, but there is the Blue D with heal. We were not aware they had that at this point. Oh, and Game Boy having all the luck with the Hurt Moors here. That, that is... Wow, there's the first one that's been missed on Game Boy's side. He got back-to-back -back Hurt Moors on the Blue Dragon and Hawksness to find the armor, and has gone four out of five Hurt Moors on the Blue D and Swamp Cave so far. So Game Boy is just flipping coins to beat the band and killing major enemies. That is level 10 on Game Boy's side, and we find heal and heal more. We are through with our spells. We have what we need. Now it's looking for the stats and getting ready for the Dragon Lord. And there it looks like Game Boy did get killed by that blue D, so we will now have a gold grind commencing in the Tantagel Treasury. We have three chests opened in Garenham. We have three ch chests opened in the throne room. And now Game Boy will open two chests before hopping on that middle chest and beginning the gold grind. Here it goes. And we will be going up to about 15,000 after which point I expect Game Boy to run immediately either back through the Swamp Cave using Outside or just about 10 steps north to Breconary, both of which have silver shields in their armor shops. Meanwhile, the Mountain Cave discovered here by the Amuse Miniature. Big Bucks in the top chest and now four more in the lower level here. There's the fighter's ring. That, once that's put on, that's going to add two attack points to the Amuse Miniatures total. Yep, and we are still hunting those Stones of Sunlight, so this could be very, very big for Amused. And there's the stones. All right, so on the stream, we now have no mode. We know where all the items are to make the rainbow drop. We know where the armor and the sword are, and we know that we have heal more at level 10. So now it's just a matter of get everything turned in and grind your stats. So away we go, folks. Let's see who can find everything faster and who can get down to fight that Dragon Lord. And an herb in the last chest in the mountain cave, so... Garen's Grave doesn't look like it's required this seed. Yeah, it looks like Garen's Grave doesn't have anything in it today. That's the Fighter's Ring, the Death Necklace, everything's already been found. So I'm not even sure, other than maybe three or four torches to get through the grave, I'm not sure what can possibly be there. Uh, maybe some magic keys. I don't think we've seen any of those in the uh, in the treasure chest as of yet, apart from the opening one in the beginning. 
Oh boy, the green dragons look like fun today. Sleep and hurt more on those green dragons. That's uh, not a lot of fun. But I do expect Amused here to get their gold grind on and then potentially go back to Hawksness and find that Erdrix armor behind that blue dragon. I'm not sure where Amused is going here. Went in, opened one chest in the treasury, and then noped out. I'm a little confused. Did Amused forget that there was gold available right there? That I will have to ask Amused about when we get to our exit interviews for this seed. We do have a 2-2 two two matchup here. The winner will move on to the bracket stage of the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Tournament. And the loser will sadly be out. Oh, but Amused is taking the Death Necklace chest and turning it into a grind. Oh, no. I think he forgot there was money in the middle chest of the Tantagel Treasury. And this is going to be a very slow grind, a hundred at a time, to get to that 14,800 number needed to buy that silver shield. This is going to be rough on Amused. Oh my goodness. So as much of a uh, much as as much of a time deficit as there already was, this is just going to increase that. But, I mean, if Game Boy has an issue finding the mountain cave and getting the Stones of Sunlight, that gives Amuse the chance to get back into this here. Yeah, Amused now basically needs to go back to Hawksness and find coal, while Game Boy still has to find that elusive mountain cave. But he looks to be on the right track for the mountain cave as... We are, he is headed past Sherlock and in the correct direction now. And you can see already about a minute and a half into this grind in the Amuse miniature, not even halfway to that 14,800 needed for the Silver Shield. Yeah, this chest can only have, I believe it's 100 to 130 gold in it compared to the gold chest in the treasury that can be anywhere from 500 to 750. So you're likely to take five chests for every one from the Tantagel treasury. So this is definitely going to take some time. And there is Game Boy with the Mountain Cave find. He will soon have his Stones of Sunlight and be off to the races. Yeah, Pyre, that is a possibility. I do think with the Hurtmore spell that we've had available since level 3, that is actually less likely, especially with this grind, than it would have been if he'd ground in the center chest of the Tantagel Treasury. It looked like to me that he mismarked which chest in the Treasury had the gold, because he went into the Treasury for a moment, took one chest, and when it didn't have gold, it looked like he left immediately. So I'm not sure if he mismarked the gold chest in the treasury or if he was just doing it by memory and forgot that there was one, period. So we will have to check into that later, but that is definitely costing him some time as Game Boy is down into the lower section of Mountain Cave and will be quickly grabbing those Stones of Sunlight. And there's the fighter ring pickup just before the stones, exactly with the same route that Amuse took through this mountain cave. So I would expect these two chests to be open and Game Boy to be disappearing from the mountain cave immediately.
Game Boy doing a little stat checking there, and looks like he's going to continue on for the last chest. Not sure what he'd be looking for here, unless maybe he's concerned about a golem on a trap tile in Sherlock. Ah, there it is. There's the outside. He realizes he has everything he wants, and he is off back to the castle and going straight south of Tantagel Castle and right to that big old jerk. We have everything he wants, so he will make us our rainbow drop. All right, while on a muse side... He it does appear to be going up for enough to at least get a silver shield and something else. Probably that broadsword, as we have been discussing here with our wonderful chat on Randomania this morning. I'm trying to remember, was there a... Wasn't there a magic armor also there in Garenham? So if that's the case, the Amuse might be going up to 22.5. Yeah, with, with this hundred gold chest that Amused is grinding, I don't, I don't love this play whatsoever because there's just so much time sink in it, and you know you're going to replace the magic armor with Erdrich's armor throughout the seed. So I'm not sure that it holds a whole lot of value here, but it does look like Amused is going all the way up. Just when you think you've reached the uh, the top floor in the elevator, you keep on going here, apparently. But you can see, I mean, th this is a gold grind that is roughly six minutes in length thus far. And that has allowed Game Boy to expand to a roughly 13, almost 1,400 experience lead, a little more than double what the Amuse miniature has. Yeah, Game Boy was able to get the grind for the Silver Shield done in slightly over a minute compared to this grind that is at six minutes plus. So this is definitely allowing Game Boy to just create what is almost an insurmountable lead at this point just because of the fact that Game Boy has found all the items and is headed to build the bridge to Sherlock at the 32-minute mark of this scene. Oh, uh, well, I was going to say, the, the Stone Man being a little problematic with the sleep, the stop spell not hitting, Game Boy able to get away, though. And yeah, here at just under 32 and a half minutes, Game Boy the first to lay down the rainbow drop. Oh, and the, the grind stops at 24,000, so I think the speculation uh, was correct in both regards, or all three regards. It looks like 24,000 enough to get the silver shield, the magic armor, and the broadsword. Well, that's two of the three, but there is no magic armor in Garenham, so this is going to be a trip back to either... Breconary or Rimmeldar for the last piece, if that is absolutely what Amuse is going for. However, Amuse may be extremely disappointed here. If Amuse picks up this armor and goes straight to Hawksness, this armor is going to have about as much use as a peg leg for a two-legged man. I just th this this thing is going to have almost no usefulness here whatsoever. Oh boy, get your sirens out in chat. It's a holiday weekend in America, and the fun police are out in force. Game Boy able to take it out, though. And what, 29, wow, look at those stats. 15 agility, 29 hit points, 10 magic points. The strength still rather lacking, though. Yes, but with that HP, we are closing in on that wonderful number, 130, to allow the usage of the Death Necklace for on. Yeah, the Death Necklace, uh, in the vanilla version of the game, it's uh, 
a dud item that just curses you, keeps you from entering the starting castle, but here in Dragon Warrior Randomizer, the creator, McGrew, added a little bit of a risk-reward to it. You put it on, it still curses you, but it gives you 10 additional attack power, but at a cost. That cost being 25% of your maximum hit points. Alright, looks like Game Boy has the information that the dragons are prevalent on the first floor of Charlotte Castle. We've seen multiple Blue Ds and a member of the Fun Police, the Red Dragon. So we'll have to see what Game Boy decides to do here, as he may be diving for just strictly information on the enemy formations that are available in the first couple of levels of the castle here. Yeah, it's kind of a dual purpose. It's it's getting the information, but at the same time, you know that you have to grind up the levels anyway, so why not do it and get a lay of the land, so that way when you are ready to go, you know what to expect as opposed to getting any surprises. And thus far, well, let's just say they haven't been pleasant. Yeah, the Dragon Lord appears to have surrounded himself with a lot of dragons today. That appears to be what this first floor of Sherlock is telling us. So you're saying that the Dragon Lord living up to his namesake? Yep, it does look that way as Amused goes up in level again and is preparing to go take another crack at that blue dragon. And with Healmore should be able to do so rather nicely. Definitely going to get the bad news that the last 7,000 gold of that grind was probably not worth it. All right, looks like Game Boy was just using Sherlock to grind a little bit while he went and did the search to open up the staircase into the bottom portions of Sherlock and is now out headed back for a town, potentially. And Amuse taking the long route here for this blue dragon fight, just swinging away with that broadsword and finding the information that we got earlier that the blue dragon has heal, but does get through it and grabs his Erdrich's armor. Little frustrated by that probably as he had just done a massive gold grind on the death necklace chest in Garenham to get the money for that magic armor and it has been thrown aside faster than an ex-girlfriend at on prom night. Yikes. That isn't experience talking, is it? Thankfully no, but I have witnessed it. Let's put it that way. Oh goodness. That's even worse, the innocent bystander. Or maybe not so innocent bystander, who knows. And wow. here is another round of Sherlock here for Game Boy. As the Amuse Miniature gonna head back onto the outside of Garenham, utilizing the Swamp Cave, and back to the exploration armor in tow and not having to worry about all that swamp. Yep, the getting away from that swamp is definitely big and the stone man on Game Boy's side did resist the first stop spell. So, we are dealing with at least a fair amount of stop spell resistance on that stone man, but the second one lands and Game Boy should have no trouble here taking out the stone man. Oh, and Amused is about to get the second piece of bad news. You got the armor so you could explore. Now you're going to replace your broadsword with the big stick. The Sultan of Slot, the Colossus of Clout, it is Erdrich Sword! All right.
right, and here comes 13 for Game Boy. Two power, three speed, nine hit points. Wow, we are closing in on that Death Necklace territory very quickly here. It looks like, barring an empty eye level, level 14 is probably going to be sufficient to give us what we need. So let's see how Game Boy plans on getting this last level. Oh, and the Amuse Miniature are going to go ahead and get coordinates here. If there are any, no. The Fairy Flute is not in the overworld spot. Yep, the Fairy Flute is going to land in a chest somewhere in this seed, potentially in Sherlock Castle, but that is definitely huge for Amuse. That is going to tell Amuse the exact location of the token. It must be in coal. So he is in a full-on coal hunt at this point. But in the meanwhile here, the acquisition of the armor, the sword, like the Johnny Mathis and Denise Williams song, it might be too much, too little, too late. Yeah, this one definitely feels like that gold grind may have been just crazy rippling for Amuse chances in this race. Missing which chest in Tantagel had the gold and I think I think he thought thought he remembered one there, but that first chest where he thought it was was not the gold and he noped out immediately, which is going to come back and just be so painful for Amuse, especially with the grind clear up to 24,000 there. I mean, all told, that was, what, about seven minutes or so of, uh, of just treasure chest taking? Yeah, so somewhere in that seven to eight minute range is what it took to grind all the gold that Amused felt that he needed. All right, meanwhile, Game Boy is continuing to just tear apart the enemies of Sherlock. He's walking up to each one of them laughing at them, throwing a hurt more, or just swinging Erdrick's big pointy stick at them and knocking them flat on their backsides. And amused getting the bad news once again that the green dragons have the sleep hurt more combo does wake up and does get the stop spell off, so is able to save himself the hassle there, but that is very aggravating. That sleep and then the time spent watching yourself stay asleep, stay asleep, stay asleep, stay asleep, stay asleep. Oh, wait, wait, oh, good, oh. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. I woke back up. Off into a trance there. Dragon almost put me to sleep, goodness. Oh, but now the double hurt more with the sleep lock, and there's an attack as well, and that's going to send Game Boy out. Yep, those green dragons, if they get that first sleep off, they are nasty. But we see just a little, little less than 500 experience away from level 14 for Game Boy. Meanwhile, a red dragon gets the Amuse Miniature to level 11. And you see there, 75% sleep, 50% hurt more, 100% nasty. Amuse still hunting that town of coal. Rough little spot there. While Game Boy looks like he may be headed for the Blue Dragon Trap Tile to get the last couple of fights he needs for this next level. Three Blue Dragons should get Game Boy this level, and I fully expect that this level will be enough, barring that ever-lovely empty eye sort of level here. Anything over 4 HP will get him go mode. So I really don't expect much trouble here. I was going to say, if the strength is only one or two, I mean, you're looking then at 124 attack power. It's still iffy. Yeah, 14 heal mores, though, is a pretty big thing. The 
the green D's and the red D's appearing in Charlotte could be a roadblock, but I just, I, I, I think you're in a race situation for your tournament life. You've got to get this closed out. If you've got the stats to do it, I feel like you almost have to make the dive. One of those necessary gambles. You, know, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs, that sort of thing. Yeah, you, you're in that two and two range. You Game Boy wants to get through an attempt to defend his title. He is our reigning two-time champion of this tournament. I expect him, once he's got the stats to go, to be immediately diving down. Oh, those stats not looking good. Five, zero, one, and three. MDI loving the zero agility. And he got the exact level that I feared, the, the low HP gain. That strength not enough to compensate. Now, we had mentioned MDI earlier with the double, uh, double MDI level, and uh, uh, it was enough to, I guess, uh, get him, uh, get him jump-started for the day. Yep, we said that if we got four MDI levels that we would wake him up from his sleep so with with our double earlier and a couple of empty eye zeros coming in these future levels we have apparently woke him up for the morning beats a rooster crow any day game boy continuing the grind on the blue d's while amused is continuing that hunt for coal where that elusive Erdrix token is lying four steps south of the fountain. You can see in doing so, while while the Amuse Miniature doing a pretty good job of kind of fighting and grinding along the way, I mean, you can see that experience gap is widening. Now about 3,500 experience. Yep, definitely feeling the pain from that earlier slow gold grind on the death necklace chest now, but oh no, and Amused has now found the grave of Garen and appears to be preparing to dive it. Sadly, Ferran, we know that there is nothing of value going to be found here in the grave, as we already know the location of the token, and we already know that everything else that is needed has been found. So this is definitely going to be rough on Amused here. And chat noting that uh, statistically it is the right play as you don't know for certain if the token is in coal. So if the like, you know, if there's a possibility that one of those five treasure chests contains the token, then I mean, that's certainly the, the right play if you found it as opposed to the yet to be found coal. Yeah, with the one cursed belt, it becomes a little riskier to make this dive, in my opinion, just because you know either the flute or the token is going to be in coal, especially with the Cantlin information that Amused has. So it's, it's just one of those that this is a seed where the timing when you find the different locations is telling significantly more than just finding the locations. Uh, what the Amused Miniature has to hope for here, and we're, we're hoping for his sake that it was in those top three chests, that the second Cursed Belt, that would be the knowledge of, all right, it's definitely in a search spot. Get on out of this cave. Well, Ferran, actually, we know for a fact we won't find a second Cursed Belt because we know that the coordinates oh, are right. empty. Nothing. Oh. So it's the 50-50 shot as to whether it's the token in the chest or the or the fairy flute in the chest in the Amused Miniature's vantage point. Exactly. With the knowledge of Cantlin, Amused knows it's a 50-50 shot. Either Cole holds the flute or the token. And with this dive here, it appears that Amused feels behind and is praying that the token was the one that landed in the chest. 
we know that gamble's not going to pay off. I've been taking pretty good notes, but on the same token, I've been bouncing back and forth from the Discord studio to the on-air studio. Absolutely. We are doing our best here to keep everybody good and razzled up for the morning. As Amused is down into the lower section, and the next chest only holds some wings. So that is another chest of bupkis for the Amused miniature, and headed for the last chest in the grave now, while Game Boy F9 is one battle from the level, and here it is. All right, I expect the Game Boy will now do some math, figure out whether he thinks the Death Necklace is enough, and we'll see what his decision is. Looks like possibly a Death Warp for his MP. Definitely what this looks like to me. All right, and Amused is headed down for the last chest in the grave. Going to get the bad news that the token is not here. While Game Boy has taken his Death Warp, it is full of resources, and I expect to see Dive through Swamp to the back of Garen Ham and make the left turn at Garen Ham for Sherlock. Looks like Amused missed his turn there by one step and had to throw another Radiant out to make sure he gets here. And the last chest is an herb. Oh, boy. All right, B-Fox asking about our potential range. So, if we equip the Death Necklace, we will gain an extra 10 attack power, which will put us at 129. We have to subtract 100 for the Dragon Lord's defense. That takes us down to 29. We divide that by 2 and round down, which is 14. Divide by 2 again, which is 7. So our range is 7 to 14. And we do have 80, 88, 96, 104, 112. Yes, we are 1 MP short of 15 heal mores. So that is 14 heal mores. So we do have enough potentially here as long as Game Boy doesn't lose any heal mores on the way down. With those green dragons with sleep and hurt more, and the red dragons being their normal fun police self, this does have some risk involved. But like I said, you're in a 2-2 two and two race. You're racing for your tournament life and your entrance into the bracket stages. I think you've got to dive it and go for that Dragon Lord kill since you're able. Oh boy, and Amused has found the Fairy Flute in the Vanilla Stones of Sunlight Cave and now has the information that he has to find Cole. Wow, Game Boy deciding that with the knowledge of the Green Dragons and the Red Dragons all in Sherlock, that being just over the line for viability of the dive is not enough. It looks like we are grinding on up for another level. It's one of those risk-reward type things. You know that it's very borderline. So rather than, with again, with your tournament life on the line... You know, okay, better to make the safe play here. Game Boy tends to be a little bit more on the cautious side. If he thinks that the numbers are even, you know, 49% likely to take it, he'll go that extra level instead. And we know in this case that he has the time available for the safety play because Amuse took some significant time loss in the slow grind off the Death Necklace chest versus the grind that was potentially available in Tentagial Castle. So this doesn't appear 
that it's going to do anything other than give Game Boy that extra peace of mind. As we can see, that roughly seven to eight minutes of grind just allowing Game Boy to advance that much more. The Amuse Miniature still looking for Erdrick's token, and in the meanwhile, that experience lead has vaulted up to over 5,000. Yep, he keeps coming back over to this area, and he's not having any luck finding that elusive hidden town of coal, which our runners like to discuss the fact that it doesn't exist. In this particular seed, it must exist. Trust me, it must. But it must? Thou must find it, at least. I don't know beyond that. Yeah. Oh, and the stone man catching Amused and getting the sleep off. But Amused does awaken and get away. And there it is, folks, the elusive Town of Coal for the Amused Miniature and the token right here. Game Boy F9 is one battle away from level, jumps onto the trap tile, finds a blue dragon, and will proceed to take the final fight for level 16. So now it's a matter of trading in for the rainbow drop and getting levels and getting them quickly. Yes, thankfully the jerk is not very far out of the way. Go about 12 steps south of Tantagel Castle and you will find the jerk cave. While here comes the level for Game Boy F9, we have level 16 and it holds 9 power, 14 agility, oh, 2 game. more HP and 2 more magic. My goodness, we are in go. Yeah, with that extra agility boost, that puts us just over 50% chance to flee from even the fun police in this seed. So I don't foresee Game Boy being too concerned about this dive, especially now. Now, another decision that would be made, do you utilize the death necklace? It's kind of a 50-50 coin flip. I mean... You wouldn't have much in the way of doubles, but you have ample MP. Your defense is pretty high. I'd say throw... I mean, I'm not usually an advocate of the Death Necklace, but to make the fight go that much faster, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, so the Death Necklace changes our math from 7 to 14 up to 9 to 19. That is a significant boost... With 121 MP here and the ability to use the Death Necklace if it's necessary, I think you allow yourself to burn a couple of heal mores if you have to, knowing that that 9 to 19 is available at the bottom to speed the fight up. So you likely will not need all of the heal mores that you have available. We are now over the 120 MP mark, so we do have 15 heal mores at this point. And you figure with the Death Necklace on, you're looking at an average of about 12 attacks with those 15 heal mores. So yes, you do have probably a good three to four heal mores to spare. Yeah, you're looking at an average with the Death Necklace of 14 and a half. So likely 11 attacks will do it. So yeah, with this many... With this many, he is fine. And there is actually a sleep on a stone man for safety because we know the stone man has sleep. And so we are down to 14 heal mores. But Game Boy is just going to be as safe as possible on this dive. Make sure he doesn't take a wipe and just go get to the Dragon Lord.
Yeah, thankfully Pyre, Breconary ended up almost vanilla. It might be 15 steps away from the castle, so I don't foresee an issue, even if he were to be cursed and lose by a fluke. It's not that dangerous with how close by he is to Breconary. And there is the rainbow drop, making the oceans pulsate with color, and the bridge to Sherlock has been built by the amused miniature. Well, we're looking at a four-level differential, so this, uh, as much as I'd love to say that it is, uh, that this is as close as it looks, I don't think the amused miniature is going for game here, or or maybe realizing that he's potentially behind might be going for some YOLO hurt more strats. So maybe this is closer than we think. Yeah, Amused has gotten to level 13, so it is a little closer experience-wise than it looks on our tracker at the moment. Our wonderful restreamer Cyberdark trying to do double duty here and keep track of everything, so... With the 125 HP, I could definitely see a Muse doing a dive hoping for a strength or HP gain to uh, accelerate this, but he is just not going to get that lucky. We know that 14 just did not have the stat gains that you would hope for from a level. Hmm. Perhaps just trying to take some winnable fights on, although the Axe Knight... Uh, I was, I was going to say, there's a bit of running going on a little bit it, it's kind of an i think a, an in-between hedging your bet type thing trying to fight your way down but fight certain battles run from others yeah it looks like he's trying to pick his fights very specifically but that was a stone man on the trap tile so that is a Sleep battle there that Game Boy does manage to win. The Death Necklace goes on, and the chat with the Dragon Lord has begun. The Amused Miniature was hoping a Game Boy would hold A there. <laughs> yeah, probably not something that you're very likely to get the two time reigning champion Game Boy F9 to do. Holding A to the Dragon Lord. Not probably the likeliest strat to uh, succeed there, Firon. So here we go. Dragon Lord battle underway. We've got 14 to start. Again, it can have anywhere from 150 to 165. We're up to 27. Oh, big 18 there. We're at 45. Fifty nine now. Yeah, with with all he came in with fourteen heal mores. I don't foresee this be, battle being a problem if he gets anywhere near average damage rolls. Well, they've been pretty well above average, except for that one here, up to sixty nine at the moment. Eighty two now. Still has eight heal mores to go. On another 15, 97 now. Yeah, Game Boy is well over halfway done with almost two thirds of his heal mores left. So this should be pretty simple, barring a miss menu for on. It looks like Game Boy is going to clutch it up here in week five, barring a miss menu, and move on to the bracket stages. Look out, folks, the two time champ is still in it. 116 now, 130. Not a great heal more there, but gets meleeed. 143. And there is 159, 153 is what has it here. And as you said, the two-time champ will make it to the bracket stage to potentially go for the three-peat. 
Get out your GGs in chat as Game Boy F9 is going to take this race and make the bracket stage with an official SRL time of 64 minutes and 41 seconds. That is a phenomenal time from Game Boy this morning. He woke up and just tore this seat apart like he wanted to get back to bed for a nap. Wow. All right, we are working on getting Game Boy in to have a chat with us while we see a Muse miniature taking on the Stone Man Trap Tile in front of the Dragon Lord. We are working our way up to another level here. As we are joined in the commentary booth by Game Boy F9, GG Game Boy, welcome to the bracket stage. Uh, thank you very much. I, I I just felt like I I ran nearly a perfect race in in my opinion. I I mean maybe I didn't, but probably the toughest part of it was the grind. Um, one of my, well, in my opinion, one of my best plays was knocking out knocking out a gold man, which which I mean, ninety nine times out of hundred I just do it for the memes, but uh, uh, this time it was it was good for a large shield, so uh, I thought that was really good. And I, and I just felt like I was finding everything and, you know, it, it just seemed like everything was coming up aces for me. And I, I, the toughest part was the grind, you know, the the uh, grind anyway. But um, anyway, that's my opening statement. I'm, I'm now open for questions. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to know what uh, type of coin you use for your coin flips, because your first few blue dragons, especially the blue dragon on the trap tile of Hawksness, was just hurt more, hurt more, dead. <laughs> and that just broke everything open for you. Yeah, I thought uh, that was a very, uh, uh, I thought that was a very, I thought I got very lucky. But I, but but uh, but I'm going to answer with a Final Fantasy VI reference and say Stalix's coin when she wins the bet against Setzer. That's 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 my answer. Oh, so you so you're using the one that Sabin used to give up the throne? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, if you're going to pull out Final Fantasy VI references, I can do that all day. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, does um, Demarine's already uh, plotting out her demise here? I mean, we, we haven't even we haven't done <laughs> ten of the races yet. <laughs> yeah, Demarine was talking. I think it was last night that she had already done the math and figured out that she was going to get the 32nd rank barring one of those ridiculous NFL playoff scenarios where four teams have to lose a game over here and one two and four or two and 13 team has to win over here to get you that last slot in to slide under those under the bar. So I think Temerine's just planning that. I don't know. I think uh, I think Demarine and I might be fighting for 31 and 32. GG Game Boy, as uh, yeah, I've been mentioning throughout the seed, taking care of occupational obligations mid commentary. Hey, no problem there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. I was gonna see if uh, Demarine defeated anybody. That's gonna also be three and two, but I don't think that's the case. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how exactly the seeding works, but I'm looking at my victories here. Let's see. Well, I don't know. I'll figure that out another time here. That's irrelevant to the point here. Well, well, I figure we have a bunch of Z scores, and uh, we'll probably do some average time. And no, that's not how we do it. <laughs> no, we do it by a head-to-head -head victories between the people in the same record, and then we do a buckle score, basically your strength of schedule, and then do like a cumulative thing like what was your record after each round we add that all up 
And then if we have to get that far, then we do the opponent's opponent's schedule. And then after that, I think we just flip a coin. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, level 15 was a situational, was a situational decision. More often than not, 15 is good to dive Sherlock, but uh, with the green dragons being as mischievous as they were, and with the star wyverns possibly doing Dragonlord Breath, and with the stonemen's often casting sleep, you notice I had to burn, a burn, a, a burn a heal more in order to run away from a stoneman um, by a casting sleep. Um, just felt that was uh, the best just to go one more level and it turned and it turned aces. Yeah, we had discussed that the math worked out to make it a possible dive at 15, but yeah, you knew you had fun police at the top, which you had scouted out earlier. You had seen the sleep hurt more combo from the green D's, and then yeah, the stone men just wanted to be trolls this seed with the sleep and punch combo that they like to uh, break out in some of these seeds. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I'm, and, and in a way, I'm just like... And also, it was a level 3 hurt more seed, and I was like, uh, oh no, not this again. Because usually, once you start... If you get an early hurt more, then the then the race starts becoming a toss-up. You know, because it, it just comes down to exploration and not just who can knock out, uh, you know who can more effectively grind, but uh, worked out in the end. Oof. And Amused looked at the Dragon Lord, figured out that his damage average was terrible, multiple rolls of six, and just takes the death and immediately heads out. It's yeah. been a rough seed for Amused. Missing that gold grind in the Tantagel Treasury and doing his gold grind on the Death Necklace chest in the back of Garenham just really set him behind so significantly after not getting the Hurt More Luck on the Blue D. He's just been playing behind all morning, folks, and it just hasn't been working out for him today. Well, not to mention also, even earlier in the seed, not recognizing or finding Breconary right away, so Game Boy already had the hand axe and was hacking away at different enemies. The Amused Miniature, maybe about four or five minutes in, ended up doing a reset, finally realizing it was there, only drew a chest in the throne room for 506 gold, not enough to purchase a hand axe. So it just everything was coming up Millhouse for Game Boy and everything uh, pretty much the opposite for the Amused Miniature here. Not getting the Hurt More luck on the Blue Dragon. So that took finding Erdrich's armor considerably longer after doing a grind on that slow grind to get the magic armor. So it probably wasn't until about 35 minutes in before picking up Erdrich's armor. Yeah, um, that was a 35 minutes on Erdrich's armor. Yeah, and I, I found it, what, 10 minutes in? It was like, and then I, and then I got lucky, obviously. I, obviously, that was a luck thing right there where I just nailed two hurt mores, boom, boom, and... And then I, and then it just happened to be, the armor be there. So, yeah, yeah, definitely the the double hurt more going off on the blue dragon was just so huge in this seed because it gave you the safety from the swamp, gave you the HP regeneration every step. It just having that so early on with the with the fortuitous hurt mores just broke this seed so wide open compared to what amused was stuck with in that early game that it just w one small piece piled on top of another small piece and has just led to the lead that you built up that just looked so insurmountable as soon as you found the stones of sunlight yeah so uh this time this time it worked out uh i mean muse miniature is a very good player you know so um uh, so I was so I was fortunate in that regard. So um, so many thanks to him for waking up at six thirty in the morning on a Saturday, and many thanks to those on Randomania who uh, woke up at six thirty in the morning. So um, uh, yeah, so good times. It was a great race, Game Boy. We'll look forward to watching you as the bracket stages begin on September 9th. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, many thanks to uh, also to uh, Peron and Hyro yourself and Cyberdark for get, putting the stream together and also waking up at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. Thank you very much. That was Game Boy F9, our winning racer this morning, and headed on to the bracket stage at three and two. We will continue following Amuse Miniature as he continues on his path. It looks like back to the Blue Dragon tile in Swamp to get the levels needed to dive Sherlock. Looks like Amused is tired of seeing that heal spell from the Blue Dragon, so the stop spell is the first order of the day. It hits, and Amused is continuing the grind. With a Kaishin no Ichigeki, and 92 damage, and the Blue Dragon falls over, cut to pieces. Amused is tearing these blue dragons apart. I feel sorry for these guys. They've got those beautiful blue scales at pink underbelly, and Amused is just tearing them apart. There's the heal spell, but it has been blocked, and Amused is rocketing straight for level 15 here. I do wonder with the knowledge that Game Boy has finished if Amused will take one more crack at this and go as soon as he thinks he's able, or if he'll grind it out for safety make that dive, and just crush the Dragon Lord's dreams all at once. Amused is having a little trouble with that stop spell. The Blue Dragon does appear to have at least a moderate resist to it today. That's going to be a little rough with the heal spell. But Amused does appear to have enough attack power to burn through it, even if that's an issue. And yes, we do see a 5 of 16 stop spell resist. So a little over 25% resistance to it. And with that 25 or that 75% heal, definitely something that you have to at least consider taking care of. Although with our attack power, not really a long-term concern, just a little bit of a time sink for our Racer Amused miniature here today. Alright, looks like we are going to have three more blue dragons to kill, plenty of MP to get it taken care of, and we will have our level 15, and we'll have to see what Amuse decides to do. As Game Boy said, level 15 puts it right on that knife's edge, and with the dangerous enemies in Sherlock, it's always a risk. Do you go, or do you get that extra safety? Game Boy took the safety, and it paid off as Game Boy has emerged victorious from this race, as Amused is continuing his grind. Well, you got to give credit to the Amused miniature. Uh, 
You would think some people, they immediately seeing the dot done and realizing that their tournament life is, uh, yeah, has, as far as the bracket stage has ended here, most people would just kind of hit the dot forfeit and kind of head off here. But the Amuse Miniature going to utilize those last uh, those last seconds of the spotlight here as, uh, as much as possible and going to a, give a good showing here to close things out. Yep, definitely and definitely a great point there, Ferran. Sticking out, making sure to show us that potential Dragon Lord kill here. Make sure to give both of our runners a follow this morning. They have they have woken up at a very early time, put on a wonderful showing here during our round five of the Swiss brackets, and there is level fifteen for the amused miniature. Now that surprises me. Didn't even look at his stats, Ferran. Just right back into the grind. Ah, there he took a look. Um, hmm, that's interesting. He's actually walking up to stay in Cantlin before walking around to Sherlock. That's an interesting movement there. So a few steps away to re-entering the Dragon Lord's castle, and Amused will begin his dive for the Dragon Lord kill. This will be a little more dangerous for Amused. This 78 agility, Ferran, do you think it's going to cost Amused compared to Game Boy with that extra level? Well, it depends on how much uh, how much running goes on here. That's uh, certainly one of the challenges. Almost as challenging as me running back and forth here and trying to do <laughs> both my uh, my paying job and uh, and this job at the same time. Yeah, that, that one level, the one thing that I guess, looking at the stat gains here that I had overlooked, there was 14 agility in that level 16, which does bump you over that 90 agility threshold that makes you just better than a coin flip to get away from these red dragons. And as we see, fun police gonna fun police. They are blocking amused and just not cooperating whatsoever here. Not to mention, because the defense is at 89 and not 90 or higher, that means in fighting the first form of the Dragon Lord, that if it melee attacks, it's going to be a lot stronger than if you had that 90 or above, as that's where you have that defense-breaking threshold. Yeah, and this the fun police are not cooperating here. That is six, that is six attacks that Red Dragon got in and two heal mores that got burned. So that puts amused behind the eight ball here just a little bit
Thankfully, the Star Wyvern was nice and busted out the stop spell as opposed to Dragon Lord Breath. So that is one thing that is working in Amuse's favor on this uh, dive down here into the Dragon Lord's lair. All right, looks like we've got two floors to go. And we will be through and ready to rock and roll over to that Stone Man trap tile and on to the Dragon Lord. Ooh, little rough luck here being multiple run blocked by an Axe Knight at 78 agility. That's a little rough here. And there's the green dragon. Oh, but Amused gets away. That's the one thing that could be a little bad here. The green dragons are probably, after the red dragons, the most dangerous enemy in Sherlock today. All right, I'm used back to the stone man. Has the stop spell, gets it off, and it hits. So I assume we will now see about three attacks here. The stone man will fall, and we will be right onto the dragon lord, folks. At an hour 26 and change. We have a Death Necklace, it is equipped, we have been squeezed, and we are talking to the Dragon Lord, Veron. We have been called a fool, and the fight commences. And there the Dragon Lord swings for 17, proving Ferran's earlier point that that lack of the last level of agility does lead to us taking 17 damage from that swing versus defense breaking it, but we do take Dragon Lord 1 down and we are on to the fight. First swing for 12. Ooh, and a low roll of 7. Ouch. Only 19 through 2 swings. This could get rough. Wow, there's another nine. My goodness. Amused just getting all the bad rolls here. That brings us up to 40, but we only have nine heal mores left. This is going to be tight, folks. All right, up to 62 now. Ooh, another nine, only up to 71. And we are down to six heal mores. This does not look good for Amused. And another mineral. Come on, game, give Amused a little bit of a break here. This is brutal. All right, looks like Amused is probably going to end up falling short here. These low damage rolls have really put him behind the eight ball, and we may be looking at some swag mores here. We'll have to see what Amused decides. Wow. Another single-digit hit for Amused. Here comes the Swagmore, and it hits! He hit with it! The Dragon Lord goes down! He swings! 
Swagmore the Dragon Lord for the last hit. Get your GGs in chat for a muse. I can't believe we just saw that. Holy cow, folks. What an amazing last play right there. The YOLO hurt more because of all those low rolls, and it hits. I told the game to give him a break. That was not the one I expected it to give him. Holy cow, folks. You have just seen one of the rarer plays in Dragon Warrior Randomizer. That was the hurt more kill on the Dragon Lord. Welcome Amused into our broadcast booth. GG Amused and good play with the Swagmore at the end, man. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I figured it was a low probability to win at 15, but I knew that Game Boy had already finished. So I wanted to go ahead and try for the swag more. If I got it, I got it. If not, I was going to forfeit. So, um, you know, it kind of softens the blow of being out of the tournament, getting the uh, 1 out of 15 on the Dragon Lord there. Yeah, definitely was a rough seed for you. Um, did... First question, Amuse, did you uh, mismark your Tentagel treasury chest? There was a gold grind available in there. You checked one chest and then headed for Garenham to the Death Necklace chest, which was a lot slower for your grind, sadly. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, um, so I I thought that I'd seen I two herbs in the treasury, so I and so I I must have mismarked it, and so that's it, that's it, super unfortunate for the gold it, grind. So. Um, the beginning of the seed was uh, was a bit of a rougher start as well. Breconary being just north of the castle was a pretty large blow, and then the gold that I ended up with out of the gold chest was a uh, was not sufficient for a hand axe, which put me a little bit behind as well, I'm sure. Um, yeah, you definitely took a hit there with that 506 gold chest after your reset. And then you also had a little bit of rough luck that Game Boy did not. Game Boy got back to back hurt mores off on the blue dragon at like level seven or eight, I believe. So he had the armor from Hawksness at like the 11 minute mark. Oh yeah, yeah. The see, and I was kind of debating um, whether or not to go and try for the hurt, hurt more strats, but it's like, hey, there's tons of exploration done. We'll come back to it when we have the equipment set to do it, and uh, we were able to get a gold grind in multiple ways. And so, uh, with that being the case, I was like, okay, let's go grab the armor, let's grab the shield, and then. If there's a broadsword in Garenham, we'll just pick that up too, because that just puts us right in play for everything. Yeah, it it was it was really a, a matter of timing here in this match. Game Boy found the early armor and went through swamp, and actually the first location he found was the Tablet Cave, which we know garnered the uh, fun stick, Erdrick Sword. So. That definitely gave him a leg up as far as that goes, because with the sword and the armor, he just tore the seed apart from there on, and you had a much rougher time getting to those locations. So definitely was a good run for you, Amused. It's We've got a lot of really great runners being knocked out at this stage. You've put on a great show here throughout the Swiss, and I look forward to seeing you run some more and maybe running against you in the future. But uh, anything else you think about this seed that you uh, either liked about your routing or maybe felt that you could have done something different on or wish you had in hindsight? Well, probably the biggest thing was trying to grind Sherlock uh, for me. I lost a lot of time doing that and then trying to fight the stone man on the spike tile. Uh, was really inefficient, so I decided to go back to Blue Dragons and found out that Blue Dragons had some resistance to stop spell. Um, so uh, there's probably a more efficient grind floating around somewhere, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, and then the other thing is, is I should have just checked north of Tablet Cave. I would have found coal and eliminated almost three quarters of the map that way. Yeah, the find of coal early would have allowed you to completely skip things like uh grave that you full dove and some of that type of stuff game boy also ground the blue d's 
You had a blue D in Hawksness, a blue D in Swamp Cave, and the Stone Man in front of the Dragon Lord. So there wasn't a great trap tile to grind on. And as far as I know, nobody ever saw a zone that was just perfect for grinding. So it looked like the blue D seemed to be the play, at least for Game Boy's portion, and for you after that attempt at the Stone Man. Yeah, absolutely. I also saw a zone northwest of Cantlin that I had uh, stepped into accidentally. Um, it was uh, it was a bigger desert area, and I saw a red dragon in there, and I had repel up, so I was hoping that it would just be red dragons. And then it turned out to have green dragons and blue dragons, and so I was a defense breaking either of them. Um, if I was able to defense break both the green and the blue dragon, a red will probably would have been a better play because reds were very vanilla in the scene and in terms of what skill set they had, uh, they were just attack. So uh, with how many heal mores we had, that would have been a very, very nice grind. Yeah, def definitely a a thing to have thought about but those green d's were just so brutal with that sleep hurt more combo that it just it it made any decision pretty rough here so definitely thanks to you amused you put on a great race and i look forward to seeing you in future tournaments and events here for dragon warrior randomizer i'd like to thank our streamer cyberdark for also taking care of our tracking this morning and Firan for making the runs back and forth, taking care of all of his responsibilities in multiple studios this morning for joining me here. I am Hyra Fellows. We have seen the Swagmore kill on the Dragon Lord this morning, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching. We will be back with future matches of Dragon Warrior Randomizer here on Randomania. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, I'm Ferran Burgundy saying may your moves be excellent and your seeds stay classy. Good morning, everyone. <laughs>